All right, hello everybody. This is Bud and I'm on the vanilla i3 configuration or almost vanilla. Uh, let me show you. This is the config file and that can actually be found. That exact configuration file can be found here in i3 as and uh, we will will open these. Uh, this is really what this video is about. i3 term, the newest script, last update 12 minutes ago so this is brand new um, I've been working on this for the last couple of days and as you those who watched the last video um, no this is uh, the script that lets you uh, manage these four different terminals um, with ease in i3 I finally completed this script and it feels really good uh, so I will demonstrate that and I thought I think it will Maybe maybe not we will see I probably will confuse myself here now with this default uh, Default uh, configuration. I just realized I don't have like uh, my uh, Vivaldi and sublime key bindings set up here. So I need to <laughs> remember to manually switch these tabs uh, Well, I guess this works. Yes, because yeah Let's take that first. i3s wiki config example. Here you have uh, two versions of the same uh, configuration basically. So this, this one, less noise, more nice, is the one I am using now. Uh, but they do more or less the exact same thing this is just more annotated uh, like more comments and and less variables so it's uh, not as cryptic maybe as this one but as you can see this is really short and terse and nice and it does all, all the same things and it is it is uh, like the basic i3 configuration but i have replaced a lot of the commands with i3 as uh, commands here so that is vanilla to me <laughs> and that is what I'm using now. So what I'm trying to say is that this this what I will show you in this video should work in a normal basic i3 configuration. Uh, but you need i3s uh, for this to work at all because i3 term heavily depends on i3s uh, functionality. All right. Um, let's see what I wrote here in the readme. This script makes term managing terminals under i3wm easier. It uses various scripts from i3s and works with the following terminals. Urxvt, xterm, xfce4 terminal and st. To use the theme switcher menu you need rofi. So that's uh, like the only in quotation mark dependencies uh, besides i3s which in turn also needs x2 tool so x2 tool and rofi and i3 as are like programs you need uh, if you want like full functionality but this is completely optional we get back to this what this actually does um, installation clone make make install no big deal these are the options so as you can see a lots of options and i want to kind of cover most of this here so this might be a long video it probably will be um, but I hope this will be interesting because I will show you some some cool stuff with terminals that this Even if you don't use this you might get some good ideas uh, on, on what to do with your terminal emulators uh, I added this section here as you can see the readme is really sparse now I, I might update it later, but whatever at least I added this I usually don't do this But now I did it, did that uh, I added i3 key binding uh, examples here so for um, a bunch of different ways to, to start terminals, uh, I added i3 king configuration examples to set up like window rules for um, terminals. And I added two example scripts here. We, we will look at all, all of this stuff. As you can see, they, they are almost the same thing here, but we, we, we take one one step at a time. I think that the first thing we do is we copy these key bindings uh, into the configuration that we have here. Because if you get that um, 
uh, um, i3 config example here i did uh, in this example the the terminal that will be started with uh, mod return is the same as the uh, default um, default i3 configuration uh, where is it it's uh, i3 sensible terminal is what is started here it, here it is mod return i3 sensible terminal is the same thing in the terse version uh, i3 sensible terminal so when i press uh, super return here it just starts this terminal and Apparently it should, I, I, I'm not even sure which, what, which this is about, ah, Mate terminal. For some reason i3 decided to, to select this for me. Or for some reason, we don't have to get into how that works, I, I know why it shows that. Sorry, I have uh, like hiccup <laughs> issues here. Uh, <clears throat> all right. So that is what's going on here, and that is not what I want. Ah, that's right, I cannot close uh, windows with middle mouse either in this configuration. I kind of want to add that to that close terminal. All right, I copied uh, the key bindings. Let's add them here. Yeah, let's use the same. Maybe I should add that to the god damn it ah i don't have backspace rebound either very annoying um let's see if i can quickly do that i wonder if i have it here uh, of course i have m map I really want these key key bindings. I'm sorry. I just have to add them. There. Um, or let's just add them there. Bind sim, and then let's see what map. I guess I have that here. There it is. Wiki. Uh, I, I should actually add these to the wiki config there because it's kind of nice to be able to uh, remap keys here with X2 tool. But save and then let's see what restart. There we have it. Super shift R. Ah, of course, now we have duplicate key bindings here with this guy. Save, super shift R. Now, duplicate key binding, split V. Yeah, it's that guy. Okay, split V there. Super, ah, those two clashes now. Okay, just comment that guy out then. There, super shift R, we are reloaded. And now I can press uh, back button on my mouse to backspace and that's nice. Yeah, I will add this to the, or maybe not. No, I will not because lots of people will get very annoyed by that. Uh, I will not add it. All right, all right, all right. Um, now we have replaced uh, starting a terminal with i3 term instead here. Um, another thing I would like to do before uh, now, because now it will get weird. Uh, I think I will just, God damn it. You know what? Let's add sensible terminal. Let's just add it to mod one. Super shift or super alt return. That open sensible terminal. I just want to do this. Open tuner. Uh, 
then open config and in the home directory and there we have now i3 menu so these are no i3 term i3 term there it is um, i will just do this make a backup and then in terminal here create a new temporary terminal maybe let's make Thunar floating here just so we can see because the first time you execute i3 term it should um, create a default configuration and we will also get an, an error uh, empty string is not a supported terminal set terminal option in home boot config i3 term config so that's uh, the first thing we, sh we need to do here specify which terminal to use otherwise it, it will simply not work um, and I didn't want to set like a default uh, terminal uh, because yeah, just set the default uh, terminal that you uh, want to use. Here is now I open this is this file. God damn it! Ah, it opened it in Leafpad. <laughs> uh, okay, this is the default uh, configuration file that gets installed, and as you can see, there is almost no settings uh, uh, done here. We can start by setting a terminal, and these are the valid uh, values here. So let's let's just say extern. Save that, and now we should be able to um, execute ex i3 term here. And it did, and it opened uh, extern. Uh, the font here, it just uses the default font, I guess, uh, or uh, no, here font default monospace is what it uh, uses. Um, if we remove this monospace from the settings and then start it again here, you will see now it uses uh, Xterm's default font uh, and it will be a different font for the different uh, terminal emulator. So if we do urxvt instead here, execute the command again. You will see now it's a different, now it's my uh, usual fixed sys font and, and so on. Uh, so unset this and then it will use like X resources or XFC for terminal, the preferences you have set there. But you can also override the fonts here uh, for all terminals uh, by setting a setting here. So let's let's use mono. Or yeah, we can use mono space. No, that will confuse me. I, I want to use fixed. Fixed. Sys, that is a special font installed on my system, probably don't exist on your system. Save. And then again. And it works. Um, but it should now also work with our... Um, uh, I don't think I have i3 config here. Let's, let's add that. There. So we can see the wiki configuration here because we added um, key bindings now for um, starting i3 term. Super return, I press that now. It should create i3 term, instance, main term, large font, palette, base 16, grayscale, light. Ah. x here is not a variable, I call it exec, so let's just fix that. Yeah, I guess I should fix this in the readme on, on GitHub so, so that uh, the settings work with this wiki i3 config. I, I will fix that immediately after this video. Save, super shift reload, and now super return. Now it created a terminal called main term. I know it's difficult to see this default font. Uh, maybe we can change that as well here. Uh, fixed, fixed, sys, 12, reload. 
there that's easier to read this right all right um it created main term when i press the super return and if i press it now again you see now it just focuses that and that's different from the default i3 key, key binding with exec i3 sensible terminal every time i press super mod one return it creates a new terminal and it chooses this uh, mate terminal that we don't want now i guess we can close all those um, but every time we press super return it focuses main term because we have specified a specific instance name here so it will always focus that all we also have the option large font but as, as you can see it doesn't set any large font and that is because um, the config here in um, we, we haven't uh, specified a large font could set monospace here and uh, pressing mod return nothing it, it still focuses the same terminal we have to uh, close this terminal and start it again now and now it should actually choose monospace at least yes um, as you can see, you can also set a specific large font size here if you want to. So now I press super return and we get a large font in that terminal. Uh, 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 config wiki. Let's do, no, let's do this, close all the tabs and then open wiki. So of course, if we remove the large font option, super return now. Ah, I haven't reloaded the i3 config, super shift. The, the thing is, in my normal configuration, I have um, systemd automatically reload the config when I uh, change it. So I'm not really used to this. I have to reload and now super return. And there, now we don't have the large font. Uh, but I want large font in, in the main terminal. Also have palette here. Now I guess it's difficult. This is a really boring grayscale. It's a mono colored palette. So there's no colors. Um, we can, uh, li if we open the terminal, or let's reload and open the terminal, and then i3 term list palettes. There, it will list all available palettes, and these will be installed uh, when you install uh, i3 term. So let's just select uh, one of these here. I have no, uh, let's take a dark one so we are sure that we get some effect. And then we set this as the uh, palette instead. Save, um, reload config, mod return. Ah, that's right now it just focuses that because it already exists but mod return now we get a dark terminal so you can easily set like a full color scheme with just one option like that cool uh, next option here will not make that much sense right now but we will uh, try it anyway super control return i3 turn i3 term and then just the option auto tile so super control return there, now it creates a, a terminal with the default options, like uh, the default fixed sys font there for us. We can see the title of the terminal is the address to the terminal. And if I press this key binding again, it will create a new terminal. It will always do that. It, it will not fo it, this will never focus an existing, it will always create a new. And that is what's important with the auto tile uh, option. Um, let's uh, close these guys. Right, uh, then we have super shift return, uh, i3 term, instance, float term, summon, and then geometry. This will kind of not work here now, but let's, let's try it. Super shift return, float term. But this is not floating, it doesn't have the geometry because we uh, use a tiling window manager in a tab layout here. So, so uh, um, um, yeah, we just get a tiled uh, window now because this instance float term, there's no magic there. We have to manually set up window rules to make that window floating if that is what we want. Um, we get back to that. Let's try out all the uh, key bindings. Super T, i3 term palette menu. If I 
press that. I get an error message here from Dunst saying I tweet term palette menu only work on terminals. Okay, let's try it on the terminal then. There, and then we get a little menu up in the uh, top left corner. I can select the uh, color scheme and you see that will only apply to that, uh, to this open terminal here now. See, these two have different and we can change here if we want to. And this also works in, in uh, these, these terminals, of course. So that is what that key binding does, and that uh, that uh, will work. And that is um, why why you need um, Rofi installed for that to work. But uh, just that being installed should should display the menu. It will probably look a bit different if you haven't set up uh, i3 menu. Um, let's bring up the tuner again there. Should really st I don't remember how to start the tuner in daemon mode now, so let's just do this. But i3 term, uh, or i3 menu, it also have its configuration there in, in, in config. Yeah, we can actually do that. We can, we can uh, remove the default configuration for i3 menu. It's extremely ugly, the default config. Should fix that, maybe. I actually have some, some ideas about the ITB menu uh, there. Now we don't have a configuration for that. And now I press mod T and this is how it looks like. It have this ugly <laughs> plan nine color scheme and uh, whatever. But you can sh rise that if you want to in this base and theme and whatnot, whatever. Um, and then we have the last key binding here super v exec typisk start and typisk start is a, a custom script here but uh, if i just press it super v it opens the terminal with uh, and now we can see this have yet a different color scheme a different font and a different font size than any other terminal we have seen and it just starts uh, my typisk uh, program uh, because typisk start is uh, it's a short little script i have I think I have it here. It's just this. It's, it's a wrapper script around this for my settings that I want to have for my typisk uh, when I start typisk. Uh, and that also means I can um, I can press super V. It always start typisk. I, I don't think I t uh, showed you this either. If I press it again, when it's active, it toggles it. And since this was now special i3 feed a container it, it did hide the whole container I press it again brings back back everything i think it's easier to illustrate if it if we are floating i press super v scratch pad back scratch pad back um, that typist start uh, script is included on the i3 term uh, 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 read me here it's here if you want to try it out yourself, but you need uh, this font here, I found it on AR, uh, Go Mono. So it's a Google font. It's very much a Google font. So if you have a problem with that, don't use that. Change the font, whatever. It's just an example. And it uses a specific color scheme and a specific geometry. But that kind of doesn't work, as we have seen. Uh, since um, since uh, now it have the correct geometry here when it's floating. So maybe let's just get right into that because it's starting to get annoying to not have the window rules uh, set up. Uh, window rules, I set them up with i3king and I added this i3king config example here. i3king is in a way a little bit complex. Uh, we, we shouldn't, l l let's just not get into anything about how it works. If you haven't used it, if, if you have no ID, I have created a video about it, like something about ruler or king or something like that. I made the script about a year ago, so the video should be like from last summer, I, I guess. I think that's when I created it. Maybe it's two summers ago, because uh, time time flies. But i3king uh, is what I use instead of i3's built-in four window rules, because those simply don't work. They are broken and doesn't seem to be get fixed anytime soon so i created my own uh, substitute for that and this is actually much better uh, really it is and it works 
under normal i3 uh, circumstances, so to speak. Uh, now again here, now I, I know I do this constantly here, but whatever. I also, I also kind of like to do this in Thunar. I open Thunar um, when I want to create like, uh, when I make backups, uh, like temporary backups like I'm doing here now for i3 term uh, and stuff like that, or i3 menu, I just copy, copy it like this and then I fix it later. Or, or I don't fix it later. But i3 king, you see, I also have a directory for that uh, with the default rules for that. I will do the same thing here, then just delete that directory and it will get created, question mark. Um, yeah, let's see what happens now. If we start i3 king here. Wonder if it created. Yeah, it created a base base uh, file here, but it's probably empty. So that's what you do probably if you don't use this. If you use it, then you know how it works, you know. But if you don't use it, just start it once and it will create that file there for you in your config directory. And I think I have that uh, uh, um, i3 term, i3 king here. Yes, this is the default or the example configuration. And this example configuration is completely useless. Uh, so what we do is we copy what I had here on GitHub, this i3 config example here. This will only apply to terminals also, so that's good. Copy that, open that file, and then we just paste that into this i3 king rules file. Save, we can do this also. I hope this works now. I don't think I have tested this example file, but it should work. Uh, syntax colon ss hash. This only works for me on Sublime here, but whatever. Nice. Uh, let's try i tweaking again. And I wonder if it is i3king verbose. Will we get the listing then? Yes, that's good. Um, now this will, okay, let's do this. Let's create one of these temporary ter terminals. This is why I, I actually do this all the time. i3king verbose. Um, and then we close this float term. And then I have to sheet, what did we have for key binding for the floating terminal? There it is, super shift return uh, should create a window with instance name float term. Let's see what happens now. Now that happened. It created the, uh, the terminal uh, and that triggered uh, i3 king here. Because i3 king, it, it looks at the properties of all windows, for example, instance names and class names. If they match one of the rules uh, that you have de declared in, in your uh, i3 king rules file, it will execute the commands associated with those uh, rules. And here, uh, it um, we can try to see which rule it um, matched here. So let's move this guy. We have a default rule. The default rule applies to all windows. It always applies. Um, but it will not apply if any other rule matches. And here we can see we have a rule called float term. So that rule will uh, match here. Or here's a rule that matches instance and um, role float term. I know this is a, 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 lot, of, a lot to take in here maybe. But uh, windows have different properties. I have secret tech. Let's create a terminal and say i3 info. This uh, is a special script I have. Whenever I focus a window, we can see the window properties of that window. And here we can see float term, the window properties, instance name, float term. And that is automatically created here with um, by i3 term or yeah we specify here instance float term so that is the instance it will get otherwise you know if you would um, 
start a terminal like uh, we we are using xterm now right uh, no urxvt so if we just start urxvt normally we can see now that this have instance name urxvt and class name urxvt and all terminals will have that even uh, and that is not so good not so good if you want to create like rules and stuff like that you want a more specific criteria we can also see that um, our flow term window here have this special title dev pts1 even if it's say flow term here so the reason it's say flow term in the window title is because that is like a, an extra uh, it's this title format it says so here uh, FRM that's title format so that is what is actually displayed in the window titles but the yeah whatever the window title is dev pts1 and that is important for this that is how this uh, terminal menu how that works uh, or the theme menu it needs to know this dev pts address uh, so you need that for that to work so it always sets that automatically here it return um, but instance name float term and that matches instance float term. The reason I also have role float term here is because uh, XFC4 terminal uh, it works much better to set the role than setting the instance. We, we get back to this soon but I, I think it gets too messy here if I start opening X, XFC4 terminals but I will soon do that. Uh, matches this rule. Uh, and the command it execute is this floating enable and then semicolon then ex execute an external command i3 corn one shot margin 40 move two and what that means is that it will i close the window i press super shift return so i3 corn uh, move two means it moves it to the second quad quadrant or whatever we should call it I think of it like a keypad or a numpad, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So just to quickly show you what, what that means. If we say seven instead, it will end up in a different location. Or of course it will not because we have to reload i3 king here now also. Just do this and this. And now uh, I, I will make a, a video soon about how to set this up with system D by the way so it will automatically reload i3 and i3 king when you make changes to these config files it's extremely comfy to have that but for now let's let's keep it simple here so now this is location 7 because 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 lower left um, and that's just an example of what you could do we could even um, I actually like to do this on this terminal I think um, say border pixel 2 save start i3 king mod shift return and there now we have a border pixel 2 on uh, of that terminal nice um, but we had more terminals like main term also have a, a window rule so if I press the key binding for that that is mod return it just focuses that right because that is um, that is um, already existing it will not trigger any rules now because it already exists so uh, uh, i3 king will only apply the rules to new windows when they are created so if we close this guy and open it again it will apply this rule but I think we will not see any difference because I think we are in the a container yes because this is and this is i3 feed specific if I change this to let's say B container then it will look like this well also we have to reload i3 king and mod return and there now it opened itself in the B container um thing is I really want it in the A container but I also want Sublime and Vivaldi in the C container that's my normal workflow but to make this I will put it in the C container 
and then I will restart this and then I will open it and we got it here in this container but I actually want Whiz, whiz. Ah, that's right, that's right. I... There. And then I want to shrink this to this size. This is kind of how, how I like it. <laughs> um, okay, this uh, the, I will regret this soon because this will get confusing soon, you will see, but whatever. Um, Okay, and then we have a, a window rule for uh, the typist terminal. So mod v, and here you see that now opened up floating uh, with, remember, uh, because when the window is floating, then the geometry of course works. Um, and this is from the typist start here. So now we have this 50-12 geometry. Um, and the window rule is to move that window to workspace 2, make it floating. And then I do one of these, uh, moving it to a specific quadrant and, and uh, making it a bit offset. This is just, yeah, I like it like this, whatever. And then important here, I also switch to workspace 2 after I have uh, adjusted the size and stuff like that. So it will always open up on, on workspace 2. Um, what about the floating terminal? That was super shift return, right? Yeah, that's this guy. And we can toggle that back and forward to the uh, scratch pad. And let's see, I think I also added the summon option to this. And this is actually an i3 run option that uh, you also can use with i3 term. It will basically just get forwarded to uh, i3 run. And what summon means is that if I am on a different workspace, I go to workspace 3 and then I press the key binding, it will summon that uh, terminal to this workspace. If I go to workspace 1 and I summon it here, that is what's happening. But if I remove the summon option and go to workspace 3 and reload the config configuration and now I press super shift return, you see, now I don't have the summon option and instead I am taken to the workspace where the terminal exists and it focuses it there. So this is, sometimes you want this, sometimes you don't. Um, I think for this uh, terminal, you kind of want it. Typist, I don't remember, does that have summon? No, no typist doesn't have summon. So when I press super V, it takes me to the uh, typist workspace. And that is kind of what you want here, right? You, you can see uh, <laughs> different use cases. Um, all right, this is going quite well actually. It was a bit uh, difficult in the beginning, but we are we are we are getting there. Let's look at um, how this i3 term w w works um, under the hood uh, a bit because it's kind of easy to do so. Let's open one of these temporary terminals. Super, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the important uh, thing here. This is actually very important because when I press super control return to create these auto tile containers, they are always tiled now in the correct, uh, the same container as I uh, have focus here. Uh, and that is because this, and this is the most complicated rule because they actually, the auto tile containers uh, always have the instance name auto. But they don't match any rule here, so they will match the default rule. Uh, and the default rule is to make all windows floating. <clears throat> but we don't want that for the auto tile containers. We actually don't want any rules to apply to them. And then that's why we have blacklisted them here from the default rule as well. So no, i3 king will not take any action on, on uh, uh, the auto tile windows at all. And they are completely managed by i3 and the default behavior of i3 is to just tile the window wherever it is, you know, or wherever the focus is. Uh, so that's why I added these uh, criteria here to match any window with the class urxvt, xterm or st256 because this is the class name for st terminals. 
and important here and the instance auto or that's what the comma here means so you can add uh, any number of, of rules here that you want to blacklist and this also works uh, here we also have a comma to separate two different rules uh, which will apply which have the sa same command uh, associated with them so um, xfc4 terminal class name and role auto I guess we can quickly look here at uh, just opening a bunch of, of, of uh, different terminals if we change this now to xterm yeah, xterm is a stupid example because it, it's l there's literally no difference uh, I do an auto type it looks almost exactly the same okay let's open st save uh, and also di did you see there that it was xterm let's do it again xterm uh, auto tile and here we can see class name is xterm this is actually xterm one way we can see is it's a little bit different padding in xterm here and you can also hold control and press the right mouse button and you get the xterm menu you don't get that in urxvt then you get this weird thing instead uh, changing this to st mod uh, control return now we got st it opened with a different color scheme because uh, yeah we haven't set a default uh, palette here so it will open with a um, yeah colors defined in st xfce4 terminal terminal super control return and now we got that so <clears throat> yeah and th this is obvious that it is uh, um, xfc4 terminal since it have the menu bar and stuff like that but you can actually disable these uh, if you want to and you can even do it from uh, with this config um, let's set up a, a default um, a default theme so i3 term list palettes and then we just take a, a nice i like a light not glue box. Uh, selenized, selenized white. That's nice. There, and we add that to the default palette, like that. We have XFC4 terminal. Press super control, and you see this. You don't have to reload anything for this. It it will read this configuration every time you execute i3 term command. It will read the configuration here, so you don't have to reload anything. Uh, press super control return. And now you can see uh, XFC4 terminal uh, uses that color scheme. That's the default now, and that will work for, for all terminals here. SD, super control return. It's not black anymore, it's the, these colors. Um, another cool feature that you, is really difficult to get, I guess, otherwise is... Ah, that's right. H here's a weird thing. Uh, now... Um, I pressed super shift return because I wanted to toggle the floating term terminal um, but it opened another one instead and the reason for that is if we look at the uh, properties here this one is ST and this one is URXVT so they don't match uh, the criteria don't match so it gets weird if you <laughs> if you change these terminals and open specific ones like this then this happens and there is really no way uh, to fix that in quotation mark and, and the thing is this is not what it's supposed to be used for that you oh now i want to open a xterm terminal and now i want to open you, you set this to, to your favorite define uh, terminal and then you, you probably don't mess with this uh, so let's close this and close this and then what was it? Yeah, this this is what I want to do. Um, this is really cool. If you use i3.4, which we do now, which is this special layout. So you can toggle uh, uh, containers like this and, and stuff like that, you know. Did I mess it up now? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, i3.4 with the tab containers and stuff like that. And... Uh, you know, 
I3 Fyra, Fyra in Swedish, four, because it means we have four different containers. We have A container, we have B container, we have C container, and we have D container. So let's do this, and now we have all four containers visible. It's starting to look like my normal, <laughs> normal uh, uh, layout here. <coughs> um, this option, auto large containers, it's kind of obvious what it does, right? If we set it to the example that we have here, to A and C, then this will happen. If I do an auto tile container here now, in the C container, you see we get a large font, but if I do it in the D container, we get a small font. B container, small font, A container, large font. That is what that option does. You can set uh, the, the containers you want to, to have an automatically large font, but it only applies to auto tile. Uh, so, so that is one of the uh, perks of using auto tile. And this, I, I, I think this is great. And haven't really seen anyone else doing that uh, uh, rise. Um, it's great. And you see, it's the same key binding, you don't have to think about it, you set it up here and then it just works. Um, these options here, don't use these, I've written it here, but let's use them anyways. Um, XFCE for terminal help. Um, here, here is it, we have show menu bar, hide menu bar, hide borders. Hide toolbar, hide scroll bar, and so on. Let's just paste them here. We can um, add like terminal specific options because i3 term you cannot just pass any option to i3 term and it knows what to do with it. It's too much, you know. And XFC4 terminal has the least. Uh, Xterm and URXVT, they have like 100 uh, different command line options. And if you want to, you can pass uh, and enter them here. But be very careful with this and probably you shouldn't use this. I will explain what I mean soon. Just let's add uh, all the UI here. Or we shouldn't, we should not add hide borders because that actually disables the i3 window decorations. There, let's do that. And then we change this to XFCE for terminal. And then I do a auto type there. This is uh, now XFCE for terminal. And now it looks almost professional, you know. Um, so you can do things like that and you can set options for the other terminal emulators but you have to look up what kind of options there is and this yeah don't use this and um, what i mean is it can break here if if both if you enter invalid options because there is no checking here that the options you enter are valid it, it can get weird if you just make a typo uh, and it can get really weird if you try to do something like um, Xterm, for example, it have an option called FN for font normal or something like that. And you would type it like this, XFT. And let's say uh, I wanted to use that go mono font uh, and say size 16. This is like valid options to Xterm. There, you see, we have a, a different font here. We have the Go Mono font, even if we get some kind of error message here, but whatever. Uh, but if we add it here, this will not work. This will break i3 term because there is a space here in the font name and it just gets... So, so be careful. It works with things like this. Simple options. But even that, try not to use it. Instead, because these will also be permanent options, if, specifically if you add them here in um, the configuration file. They are like permanent uh, options. And there usually is a way to set permanent options like this in X resources, for example, with Xterm and, and URXVT and or um, XFC4 terminal. You can set it, just set the preferences, you know, like change the preferences 
preferences here for the stuff that you want. But if you need it, it's there. But be careful if you use this. Um, I know there are issues, and I, I the thing is, this is such a, a, a slippery slope here to, to make this like work perfect. So I think it's better to to make it. I actually do think it's it's better to do add a warning and say this is slightly broken functionality. Don't use it. But here it is. Uh, you can also set these on the uh, command line. You can set most the stuff on the command line actually. And it's the same name, it's like xfc for terminal, but not underscore, it's dash options. I don't think we have looked at the options at all, right? But i3 term help, here are all the options. We are auto tile, you can also set background color. You can set the starting uh, working directory like cd. We have don't be me up, Scotty. We get back to that. Dry run, interesting, we will use that soon here. Uh, FG, foreground color, set the font on the command line just specific for one specific terminal, like I do with TPISC there, for example. Yeah, that's a better way. But this works. Here you can have spaces and stuff like that. But with the terminal options, doesn't really work. Um, Font size, uh, geometry, which is the floating geometry. I have noticed that it, there are some issues with XFC4 terminal. Sometimes it just borks out about this geometry and you get it, it displays in the wrong size. I'm not sure what's going on there. But sometimes, sometimes it works. But the other terminals always work with this geometry. Um, hide, it will always hide, the, send it to the scratch pad if you add this. Even if it is on the scratch pad, it will not show it. Uh, that's a weird option. Never use it myself, but whatever. Instance, very important option you, that I use all the time to kind of mark or specify the instance name. It doesn't really do anything for the application, but uh, it sets the window property instance name. Uh, list palettes, that's what list, lists all the palettes. Login, it will pass like L option to the shell. So. I think this is a good time here to do this. Um, I think we can do this. Uh, I3 term verbose, which is another option here. Print command and script file to standard error. Uh, if we do this and execute I3 term, uh, it gets a bit weird, of course, if you do this uh, with a key binding, you will not see the output. Ah, this is probably an ST terminal. I, this is why I don't like ST. It doesn't scroll with the, when I resize the window. Uh, I'm, I'm used to getting this stuff here shifted down. So let's just close ST here. Let's close all of them. It Yeah, it's starting to get weird now. <laughs> uh, uh, um create a temporary terminal. I think it's XFC terminal. Yeah, that should work better. And then we do I3 term. Uh, yeah, we can do it here and see what happens. Verbose. Uh, then we see I3 term verbose. Uh, it executes I3 run. Um, searches for a specific co container ID uh, and then focuses that container ID, then i3 run is completed, and then it says the title format to i3 term, and then it's done. So what this basically means is it just focuses, that is more or less the only useful uh, command sent here. No others like terminal commands or anything is executed because the window already existed, because uh, the default uh, terminal it searches for is called i3 term, and that already existed here. But if we close this guy, execute the same thing again, we get a lot more output here because now it needed to create a, a, a window. We we'll first uh, search for it and see if, we, if it can find it, but it will not find it this time. Uh, let's see, here it starts. So instead it will create a script file and then it executes this command here, xfc for terminal uh, role i3 term. Uh, so, and that is what sets uh, the, the role here. Uh, font fixed sys, it uh, get, uh, gets this from the config file. 
Here we can see those extra options, hide menu bar, hide toolbar. Remember, this is just passed here to the normal XFC for terminal command. And then lastly, it passes E option, which uh, is supported by all terminals, but it is supported differently everywhere. And that is why I create this um, script file instead. So it just execute this uh, uh, temporary script that it creates. Uh, and that script in turn includes, uh, it cuts out the palette, if there is a default palette specified or a palette on the command line. Uh, this sets the title to TTY, the output of the command TTY, which is the address we talked about, which it was needed for the uh, to set the, the color scheme. And here you can see now we are at XFC4 terminal, it just works here as well. Um, next line that uh, sets the cursor to a blinking beam. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of things to say about that. Uh, we can get back to it soon here. Uh, and then inside a, a block that is executed in the background, it will remove itself. It will remove the, the script, the temporary script file. But it does that after 200 milliseconds. Uh, it does uh, and execute that in the background. So this will happen after this line and this line exec bash. Uh, and that is what login is for. So if the login option is used, we will now see that bash have the L option here. So that means it uh, executes it uh, with a login shell. And there are some more, like you can actually specify the shell here. So if you have uh, different shells installed or you prefer something else, you can use uh, said this H if you have that or a siege or whatever. Now you can see now it worked out uh, finally. Um, XFC terminal does that sometimes. It just creates a gigantic terminal. Even if you specify geometry, it, it does that sometimes. Uh, but now we are CSH. Um, let's see. Role and instance, by the way. You can, they they are like aliases for each other. They have exactly the same. So even even if you start a terminal uh, that is not your XVT, you can still use role and that will set the instance name. And you can use instance to set the role name on XFC4 terminal. So that, it's just a convenience thing. Uh, hopefully it isn't that uh, uh, um, confusing. Palette menu, that is the command that brings up that menu. So but it only works if the active window is a uh, terminal. Of course it is if you execute it from the terminal. So. Uh, palette menu and there we get that select something and there it changes. Um, and then we have these term extra options passed to the terminals like ST options, XFC4 terminal options, URXVT options, XTERM options. Uh, someone that was what I showed you there with going to the workspace pass to, to i3 run uh, terminal you can also specify terminal on the command line so uh, yeah it's kind of easy it's it means uh, terminal st and then it will op open this is an st terminal instead of the in, in the configuration we have xfc4 terminal set so you can also if you need to test something or something, you can use that. Uh, um, what do we have more? Large font, it forces that large font. Uh, otherwise, that only have effect for auto tile windows. Uh, but you can also force it to use that alternative font. We, it doesn't have to be large, by the way. It, it, think of it more as an alternative font uh, if, if you want to. And yeah, that's all uh, the command line options. Can be interesting to see here because it might look like this is really slow here. It takes 220 milliseconds to, to create a terminal, but uh, that is kind of fake news in a way. If we do this and then we use the dry run option, it will not uh, create a terminal. It will just uh, generate the script file and the t command it needs to execute and everything. So th this does everything except executing the actual command and then we can see it takes about 60 milliseconds so 
and the reason this is so long is because it it always uh, if you don't use dry run of course it always let's also remove verbose here it's easier to see it always prints this uh, container ID so it um, it starts a terminal, then it waits for that terminal window to um, yeah, get created, fetches the container ID and prints that. So that is basically what takes all this time, is that it waits for the window to exist. And it does that in a loop that kind of sleeps for 100 milliseconds so it doesn't get bloated. But in reality, the terminal starts here after 60 milliseconds, about 50, 60 milliseconds, then it starts the terminal. And that's, then it takes usually like 10, 15 milliseconds or something for the window to appear. And then uh, this is just like extra steps, but then the terminal has already started. And I even uh, saw in my testings that, um, yeah, we had that i3 king uh, running, you know, that triggers window rules. Now I have completely messed up all this <laughs> stuff here, but i3 king, actually starts executing the window rules before uh, this command is finished which is proof that it is uh, it is faster than it looks like but even 200 milliseconds is fast you know, this is a good script I'm, I'm very happy with with how it turned out um, the script m might also look uh, like bloated or, or large it is about 400 lines long but about uh, more than 100 lines are dedicated to just displaying the options and parsing the options. Um, let's see, down here, you see a lot of that stuff is, is the script actually. And then there are lots of these uh, things all around the script because it, it does everything slightly different depending on the terminal. So here you can see to set the font. ST, you pass it this option, X term this, uh, your XPT this, and X. So I have to do these case uh, tests all over the place, which makes it like four times as long as it uh, was when I was just using your XPT. Um, yeah, that is how it works. Um, the last script I would or last thing I would like to show you. Well, it is a script. Let's see if we can find Vivaldi because it is a, a script here included uh, called Sid Open. Uh, this was something I did the, the other day. Um, let's see if we can open Thuna again. Let's just open it here. Make it floating. Should no, it was floating, but it was just gigantic. Uh, Hide hidden sound SID. So these are SID files. You can say extremely small files, four uh, kilobyte, five kilobyte. Uh, the, this is actually C64, you know, Commodore 64, the old home computer from the 80s. It's music made uh, on for those types of computers. Uh, and sometimes I like to listen to that those types of files, and you can do that uh, in different ways. And I found this uh, this is actually a quite good uh, SID player program uh, that works in the terminal. So if we just take a file here, this one. Now I have turned off uh, my amplifiers. We will not ha hear any sound, but you will see how it looks like. God damn it! Sid play FP, okay. S sound Sid nineteen ninety two. There, it looks like this, and now it's actually playing this file. Uh, so it's a terminal application. And I thought uh, it would be nice if I could do this with uh, like uh, with uh, Commodore sixty four colors and fonts and stuff. So I found a Commodore sixty four font on AUR. Uh, TTF-C64 um, and just installed that, this one and um, use that font and uh, override the, the background and foreground color with the classic C64 uh, colors and then I can open SID files with, with this script here, SID open 
It's just this. It's just a wrapper around i3 term execute this command. Ah, that's right. We haven't really talked about commands, have we? Yeah, we have to do that. But uh, uh, I have the script and I have set it to be the default application to open SID files with. So if I double click this one, see now it opens here in SID play FP. Uh, now it looks really, really weird because um, I haven't set up window rules for it. So let's do that quickly. Uh, if we can find, now we have to find that uh, 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 terminal that where i3king is running. Or I think there is a way to restart i3king from the command line. i3king help. Yes, reload. Uh, so let's just copy this one. Then we say play fp. I will add this also to the readme on github, this rule. Uh, and now if we open, ah that's right, we also want to i3king reload. Now, now you see it opens in uh, the, the C container just as our main terminal and with the C64 colors and fonts and stuff like that. And this is uh, XFC4 terminal. It will work in all, no matter which terminal you have set uh, as the one to use here. So we can change this to, or let's change to ST. Just double click and this is a cool thing. You can bind like terminal applications reliably in quotation mark now. Um, as default applications by using this uh, i3 term. Uh, but still, it gets it, it is probably a, a really good idea to create um, create uh, uh, wrapper scripts when you want to do that. Uh, let's see, sid open, where are you? Like here is sid open. It's better to do this than entering this command line as the, as the command for, uh, to, to open with, because you never know about Dunar or whatever, but this will always work. So uh, yeah, I have here default application, open with SID open, it's my default application. And this is, oh, did we never change it to ST? No. Uh, ST. There. Pretty cool. Uh, or pretty. <laughs> such a stupid. This is really a silly, uh, 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 silly, silly little uh, thing you can do with it. But it's kind of fun. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Yeah, commands, commands. That is, of course, important. I don't think I, I have shown you that in this version of this video. I hope not, because it feels like this this time it, it went well. So let's quickly here just uh, look at how it works. i3 turn htop. No options, nothing. I just uh, say i3 term and then the name of a terminal command. This can be uh, a bit volatile, so, so to speak, if you would enter like a GUI application here, it would still kind of start the terminal and I'm not sure what will happen. But HJOP, that's a terminal application. It just created now uh, um, a terminal with HTOP and it will have the uh, instance name uh, HTOP. So you can easily set up window rules for it. And oh, this is the whole command. And I find that kind of neat to be able to do that. You see it have this color scheme and here, same thing here, uh, HTOP for instance, that is probably a, 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 an application that is very sensitive about uh, the color scheme. Some, some schemes just don't work with uh, HTOP, you know this. It's so annoying when you cannot read uh, all the uh, properties and stuff like that. So then you can create a little uh, uh, command line with a specific theme and so on for HTOP if you wanted to. And you can of course, you can say uh, instance uh, proc for processes or whatever. Now it created, a, it's still open htop, but it uh, now it named the window uh, proc. If you wanted to do that, 
Uh, but uh, sometimes you want to execute more complicated commands, like uh, for example, tpisk. Tpisk, you can start it in any terminal, right? You can start it here, works fine. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Tpisk support a bunch of command line arguments, for example, lines, it's a new option here, so we say lines four, and now it opens with four, four lines instead of the default two. Uh, but it opens in, in this terminal, of course. If we wanted to use i3 term with tpist, we just say i3 term, and then uh, now we I think we need to add a, a instance name, otherwise it will trigger the tpist rule here. So let's give it instance testing uh, tpist. And there, it created tpist here. But what if I want to uh, add those lines Four here. This will not work because now i3 term it have no idea that this option was meant for cheapest. It thought it was meant for i3 term, and it will say I don't know what lines is. And this can also worst case scenario is that you pass an option that is actually recognized by i3 term, but it is not what you wanted. You know this is don't do this, and it doesn't even work. So what you do when you want to do that is that you say dash dash. And that means stop interpreting command line options for i3 term. The rest of this is the commands uh, we want to execute in the terminal. And that works. Now we get a terminal with four lines. And you can add more, uh, as many options as you want. And this even works uh, with um, pipelines if you want to. So you can do echo bud labs uh, pipe that to figlet and sleep for five, four seconds. Let's see if this works. It doesn't work. What happened here is that it, it did echo, that is the command, but then the pipe here actually applies to this thing. So it, it, it thinks that it should execute this and pipe the output of this thing, which is, it, it simply doesn't work because you see, um, I think you understand the the pipe symbol here has a very special meaning and so does the ampersands as well in bash you know so you need to make sure that they are treated as arguments to uh, the command here and not interpreted literally so just put quotes around them for example or backslash in front of them or something like that and now it will actually work now we get bud labs figlet it will sleep for four seconds and then that terminates the terminal. If we wanted to keep the terminal, we could just add like, uh, yeah, we can do backslash semicolon. This is an alternative to quotes. So this will also work. And then uh, say bash does this for seconds and then it will execute bash. And then we get a bash shell here. Cool. Um, and I think that wraps up um, this uh, little uh, <laughs> video about my thing here, um, i3 term. I think it turned out uh, well, uh, this thing. I will update the readme a little bit more here, I guess. I uh, haven't decided if I should put it on AUR. Uh, yes, I could. Why, why not? Yeah, but it feels good to finally be done with this and the, the hardest part was actually to create the, make this video. I'm not sure now how long uh, did I go on this time. We are at, yeah, one third. It's always this. It, uh, so this this is how long it takes for me to demonstrate this. I'm sorry for every, every uh, TikTok brained uh, Zoomers who cannot stand uh, one hour videos like this, but I guess this content isn't uh, for those, I guess. I don't know. Uh, this is whatever, whatever. I just want to demonstrate my, my program and script and, and uh, rise and stuff. This is this is the Bud Lab format. <laughs> what can I do? What can I do? Um, yeah, thank you for watching everybody. Please let me know if um, you find any issues if you try this and yeah, the, if you use any of these terminals, and if you use i3, this, this will be a, a quality of life improvement, I think. And it seems like it's everything is working. I have really, really tried to make it everything works. Uh, but please let me know if there are any issues. 
uh, with it. Uh, uh, um, yeah, we wrap it up there. Have a great day, everybody. Bye, bye, bye. Ah, oh, that's right. I don't have the key bindings. I have to. I'm on this stupid. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh,